today I just want to talk a little bit about um, the credit system and just answer a few questions that people have had in regards to what it is and how it works. Um, now I've had a few people saying to me that the way that I've written about the credit system in the in my book, Philosophalutionist, is that the government would control the distribution of credit. Now the way that I wrote it in the book, that would be the case, except you've got to understand it would be a different form of government, because you have a different form of money. You cut out the corporations, you'd cut out the banks, and you've given the people, through the benefit to society referendums, a lot of control. So the government actually becomes more like what they're supposed to be. They become our public servants and they're really just there to manage things, manage infrastructure and push buttons. Um, now the credit system doesn't have to run through uh, the government or the credit department. There are other ways that it can be organized. Um, other organizations or groups of people or locally there's so many different ways you can actually manage the credit system because it's so dynamic. Because credits are only produced when people do work. And because they don't circulate and they're deleted upon transaction, um, it gives you a lot of various ways of, of using the credits and organizing society because you're not basing your society around competition anymore. Everyone's not going around fighting over the scarce essential resource called money. Because right now, whether you want to admit it or not, you're out there, you're competing for the money that's in circulation. In the credit system, and I've only just started looking at it like this, you can look at it almost like a game. You know the old saying, life's a game. And people might be a bit freaked out by that. But what happens on a game? Well, on a game, you're playing it, you go and do um, missions and you go off on quests and do stuff so that you can get the treasure or rewards and new weapons and armor and new car parts and all this kind of stuff. Now sometimes you compete against other people. Okay, sometimes you cooperate and work with other people. And sometimes things drop randomly for you. Other times you earn whatever credits or money that the game gives you. Okay. Now when that happens, that doesn't affect the economy in the game because there is no economy in the game. When you go to purchase something, you use your own money and that money just disappears. You get what you need, now you have to go and get more money again by doing more missions and getting the rewards. What you do doesn't affect anyone else. It doesn't affect the guy that is selling you the the item that you're buying because it's just a computer program. You know, that, that person isn't an individual in the game generally. They're just, you know, a bot, you know, that has been put there to, you know, create a store that's selling you stuff. And so it doesn't affect the rest of the world. You know, your actions in terms of what you're doing with your money doesn't impact the rest of what other people can do. And it's the same with the credit system in many ways. Of course, in the credit system, you're talking about a real life situation, real life scenarios, real life products. If I go use my credits to buy some apples, well, obviously there's not gonna be as many apples there. So it's not entirely like a game and you don't want it to be entirely like a game. Um, life, although it can be called a game, is very real, very serious. So we have to take you know the way we organize our society seriously. And I would say that right now we're not taking it seriously because so many people out there still believe that the way they thought of how we should organize society 300 years ago is still relevant and the way that we should do it now, even with all our advances in technology, uh, philosophy, I don't know if that's advanced or if it's gone backwards, but there are certainly many, many new ways, innovative ways that we can organize ourselves. And that's essentially what economics is. You know, it's not a science, as, as many people out there wanted to call a science, it's not a science. It's a bringing together of different philosophies and ideologies, creating a coherent system structure that works across a broad spectrum and hopefully works for most of the population. It's about the way we organize society and how we 
get the most out of what we've got. Now, at the moment, we've got a lot, but we're not getting the most out of it. So we need a new system, you know, fundamentally, a fundamentally new system because, you know, just trying to, um, you know, put a band-aid on the current problems or, you know, work inside this current model to get a solution, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And I like what the Yellow Vest movement are doing with their um, citizen-initiated referendums because then that allows us to take another step forward and actually put to the people, look, we can actually move into an entirely new system. Because the citizen-initiated referendums still work inside the same system, but through that we can then move on to vote to get a better system. That's one way of doing it anyway. And so that's what you have to do. Fundamentally, change the way that we operate. The first thing to do is change the way people have their outlook on uh, the world and on society and, and on themselves as well. And that's why I wrote my book, Philosophy Solutionist Thought Action Change. Right there. And in particular, what I'm talking about is the credit system. Now, I do go into other systems as well, just so you know. I go into educational systems and governmental structures as well, and I've seen other people working on this kind of stuff also, people that I'm in contact with, and I really like their ideas. The thing about introducing new ideas and new philosophies um, to people is you've got to disconnect from the outcome. You've got to you know, put your ego to the side and ensure that what you're doing you're just doing it for the betterment of society, you know, the betterment for our, of our children. Um, if your idea doesn't work, that's okay. Cross it off and go to the next one. Perhaps someone will use your idea and, you know, tweak it a bit or just take part of it, combine it with their idea and make something better out of it. It doesn't matter. You know, what really matters is that we advance out of the state that we're currently in because the state that we're currently in is, is really, really bad. Um, and the more that you understand what we could do and the more you understand where they're trying to take us then the more you know how bad it actually is so yes the credit system uses money very similar into what you'd find in a game or points now a lot of people would say that money needs to circulate money needs to be tangible and have value and all this kind of stuff but it doesn't and a lot of people are starting to realize that especially with the advent and the um sort of popularizing of cryptocurrencies and things people are starting to realize that money doesn't have to be tangible um and there's all sorts of ways we can create currencies and organize ourselves the best thing about one of the best things about the credit system to me is that you don't have to compete against anyone except for yourself. I mean, sure, there'll be competition in terms of businesses and those will relate in with uh, the optimization principle, benefit to society, referendums, how much you're going to be um, earning. And depending on how the, the, the population wants to structure the credit system, will determine largely how it operates because it, because it's so dynamic you know the current model is is not very dynamic it can only work a couple of ways and if you deviate if you try and deviate from those ways then foreign governments will attack you you'll you'll get sanctioned um, and even if you make a mistake whilst deviating from those those ways um, you can find yourself in a lot of trouble economically especially if you haven't diversified your economy um, and I'm not even going to give an example. I, I could give an example, but mm, too many bad comments will come from it. So you need a more dynamic economy, and that's what the credit system offers. And But to me, in this video, I want to make the point that inside that system, you're really only competing against yourself. Because credits are only created when you do work. So if you don't do the work, maybe you'll get your your universal basic income which will be very low but you won't get a substantial amount of credits you do the work you get the credits now you're not fighting over them with anyone else you can be assured that um, you are going to get them they're going to be paid to you 
because it's not like your corporation can fail or run out of money because there are no corporations and money is created when you do work it doesn't matter how much money is already in the system okay inflation is not going to work the same the the way that um, because you take out circulation the way that um, inflation works in the credit system could be to our advantage and I explain more in that in my book because it's, it's a little bit complicated and that's why I write it down because sometimes it's just hard to articulate um, you know by speaking it but essentially if there is inflation we can use it to say look everyone's got a lot of money and this just points to the fact that people don't need money because it comes back to the basic foundational um, idea that you actually don't need money to operate in this world money's not inherent in the world it's a creation of man we don't need it Currently, I believe that we probably do need it because we are not evolved enough consciously to be without it. That's the truth. But technically, we don't actually need money. And the credit system, the way it works is on a psychological level, works to show people that we don't need money because credits aren't tangible. Credits don't circulate. Credits aren't transacted from the buyer to the seller. So people start understanding that, hang on, look, I'm not even giving this person my money. This person's getting paid for the work he's doing anyway. The manufacturers, the farmers, growers, um, you know, all of them are being rewarded for the work that they're doing. But they're not even being paid by the people that they're giving their goods to to sell on to me, the consumer. So society is, is going to start working differently. People's mindsets are going to start working differently. And pretty soon you'll be able to move into something perhaps like a resource-based economy. Perhaps something where people work a certain amount of hours once that level of optimization is found. And once that, those level of hours are met, they can go and get whatever they want. And I have had some resistance. You know, people have said, you know, everyone can't have the same amount of stuff. Yeah, that's communism etc and it is but that's the world that they want to take us into which is why it's so important that we get the credit system or something like it up and running so that we can break free of the banks break free of the corporations and ensure that the world we move into is controlled by us through benefit to society referendums or like the yellow vest say the CIR RIC citizen initiated referendums they're very similar okay the citizen initiated referendums create a vote for people where they vote on laws and things like that the benefit to society referendums are different in the way that they create a vision which the credit system shapes around so similar both democratic one is more to do with um, policy the benefit to society referendums are more to do with um, the socio-economic um, shaping of a system so that's just a little short video I just wanted to make um, just to, to tell people that the way the world is the way the things are structured it doesn't need to be like that you know for all of you guys out there who are really dogmatic and you know you come from some economic school of thought just remember that a lot of those people that came up with those systems they weren't economists all right some of them were some of them weren't. Some of them were moral philosophers, etc., etc. So you don't have to be an economist to come up with these systems um, and ways to shape the world. And if these, if those economists and philosophers were alive today, you have to think: What would they be saying? Would they still have the same ideas, or would their ideas have evolved? Because I know if I lived 200 years from now, if society, if humanity was still around that my ideas would have evolved and changed as well because the important thing is that you make your ideas relevant to the time the credit system is a good idea because it's relevant to the time it's an, a logical step that we can take to undermine this current system from within infiltrate it undermine it and get a more democratic economic model put in its place where there's no banks no corporations and government, as I said at the start, um, 
who everyone thought is going to be running the show in the credit system won't be because corporations don't get paid and what is government government is a corporation an organization only people can get paid in the credit system you are competing against yourself remember that all right peace